Okay, in our video series of ECG interpretation made easy, in this video, we are going to talk about rhythm determination. Basically, there are a few things that you need to do in rhythm determination. You have to calculate the rate, whether there is tachycardia, whether there is bradycardia. You have to look at the regularity, whether the rhythm is regular or irregular. You have to look at the P wave, whether P wave is present, absent, and if it is present, whether it is normal or not. You have to look at the PR interval, whether the PR interval is prolonged. You have to look at the QRS complex, whether it is narrow or it is wide. And then you make an interpretation, you write down the comment. Now we'll determine that how to calculate rate in ECG. First of all, coming to rate determination, there are certain methods of rate determination. First method is square counting method. Square counting method is the easiest method. In square counting method, what you do is that you count the large boxes, large squares between the QRS complexes. If there is one large box between the two QRS complexes, the rate is 300. If there are two large boxes between the QRS complexes, the rate is 150. If there are three large boxes, the rate is 100. If there are four large boxes, the rate is 75, 60, 50, 43, 38, 33 and it goes on. So this is the simplest method to calculate rate from ECG. Now if you look at this ECG, there are 1, 2, 3 and almost 4 large boxes between the QRS complexes. So the rate of this ECG is 75 beats per minute. This is the simplest method. Now we will calculate rate by square counting method in this ECG. Now if you count the squares, one large square, two, three, and almost two third of the third one. So 300, 150, 100, and a little less than 100. So we call the rate as 90 beats per minute. One large box counts as 300, if there are two, that is 150 beats per minute. If there are three, that is 100 beats per minute. We have a little extra of the fourth box, so we put the rate as 90 beats per minute. Now, what you should do is that you should pause the video and solve this ECG. Coming to the rate calculation of this ECG. If you count the large squares, there are one, two, three, four. So one, 300, two, 150, 3, 100, 4, 75. So almost the rate of this rhythm is 75 beats per minute. Second method of rate calculation in an ECG is called as 300 method. In 300 method, what you do is that between the QRS complexes, you count the number of large squares and you divide 300 by number of large squares present between the QRS complexes. In this, you have to use calculator. So, number of large boxes between these two QRS complexes are 1, 2, 3, and 2 third of this and 1 third of this. So, we almost have 4 large square between the QRS complexes. 300 divided by 4. 4 number of large squares between the QRS complexes is 4. 300 divided by 4 is 75 beats per minute. So in the square counting method, it was 75. In the 300 method, the rate is also 75. So these are different methods that you can use to calculate rate on ECG. Now coming to second ECG, a bit difficult ECG. We'll solve the difficult ECG so that the simple ECG is become even more simpler. In such ECGs, you have to look at the point which is more clear, either the top point or the lower point. Usually in these ECGs, the lower part is a part of QRS complexes and top is usually the T wave. So what we'll do is that we'll take the lower part and we'll see the number of uh, large boxes between these QRS complexes. So we have almost one large box between these QRS complexes. So 300 divided by the number of large boxes, which is one. So the rate of this ECG is also 300 beats per minute. Now, the third method of calculating rate on ECG is called as 1500 method. In 1500 method, what you do is that you divide 1500 by number of small squares. 
in the previous one in 300 method we divided 300 by number of large boxes in this one in 1500 method you divide 1500 by number of small squares so between the qrs complexes we will calculate the number of small squares so the number of small squares are 1 2 3 3 large boxes 3 multiply by 5 uh, that is 15 15 16 17 18 19 20 so 1500 divided by 20 which is equal to 75 beats per minute so the same ecg we calculated rate by three different methods now coming to ecg of hard block in how do you calculate rate in a ecg with hard block now if you look that there is p wave and qrs and distance of this p wave from qrs is larger and if you look at this one the distance is even more so in such cases the atria are contracting at a different rate and the ventricles are contracting at a different rate so there are two rates going on in hard block patients the atria the atrium are contracting at a different rate and the ventricles are contracting at a different rate so we calculate the rate separately in such cases you calculate the ventricular rate so if we use the number of small squares so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 large boxes and each large box contain 5 small boxes. So we multiply 7 by 5 and that is 35. 1500 divided by 35 is equal to 42.8. So the rate, ventricular rate is 42.8 beats per minute and it is less than 60. It is bradycardic. So this is a bradycardia. Since it's a hard block, in hard block we have the bradycardia. We will calculate the atrial rate separately. Atrial rate 1500 divided by 15. Now between these atria you calculate the number of uh, small boxes. 1, 2 and almost 3 large boxes. Each large box contains 5 small boxes. So 3 multiplied by 5 is 15. 1500 divided by 15 is equal to 100 beats per minute. So atria are contracting at a rapid rate, 100 beats per minute and ventricles are even slower, 42.8 beats per minute. Now coming to 6 second method. In 6 second method, remember in patients with irregular rhythm, in patients with atrial fibrillation where the ECG has an irregular rhythm, in such irregular rhythm, you cannot use the 300 method or square counting method or 1500 method because the distance between QRS complex somewhere is smaller and distance between the two QRS complexes is somewhere larger. In such cases, you use the 6 second method. How do you perform the 6 second method? Now remember the one big box on ECG, the one large box on ECG is equal to 0 0.20 seconds. And if one large box is equal to 0 0.20 seconds and if we take 15 big boxes, so the 15 big boxes multiply by 0 0.2 is equal to 3 seconds. So the 15 big boxes represent 3 seconds on ECG. And if we have 30 big boxes, they will represent 6 seconds on ECG. So what we do is that we count 30 boxes, basically 2 sets of 15 large boxes on ECG. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This is a 3 second strip and then we count another 3 second strip 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 3 second plus 3 second is equal to 6 second. You take this 6 second part of an ECG rhythm and you calculate the number of QRS complexes present in this part you calculate the number of qrs complexes present between these six second strip so the number of qrs complexes are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 and whatever answer you have so we have 14 qrs complexes in this six second strip we multiply the number of qrs complexes by 10 and that is the rate of ecg 
So we have 14 QRS complexes on the ECG. 14 multiplied by 10 is 140 beats per minute. This is so simple, so easy. That's how you calculate a rate on an irregular rhythm by six second method. Now, if you notice, many ECGs usually have a three second marking on the ECGs. On the rhythm strip, you will see that there is a mark present after 15 large boxes a mark present after 15 large boxes this basically is used for six second method to calculate rate in an irregular rhythm ecg so these are 15 boxes that is equal to three seconds these are 15 boxes that is equal to three seconds six seconds so the sum is six seconds and you calculate the number of qrs complexes present in it and you multiply it by 10 that is the rate so easy now what you should do is that you should pause the video right now and solve this ECG yourself. Take a piece of paper and solve it. You, when you solve it, you will remember it forever. Now coming to the answer of ECG. We'll count the 15 large boxes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 15 large boxes over here. This represent 3 seconds, this represent 3 seconds and the sum is 6 seconds. So we will calculate the number of QRS complexes present in this six second strip. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And we won't count the 15th one because it is outside the last box. So basically we have 14 QRS complexes, 14 multiplied by 10 is 140 beats per minute. So the rate of this ECG is 140 beats per minute. This is another ECG, pause the video, solve this ECG yourself so that you remember it forever. Now coming to the answer of this ECG. We have 15 boxes and 15 large boxes over here. That is a six second strip. Number of QRS complexes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that is 14 multiplied by 10 is 140 beats per minute. Another with the same rate. Now, how to determine regularity in an ECG? Regularity is basically the distance between the QRS complexes. If the distance between the QRS complexes is constant, that is a regular ECG, which is normal. If the distance between the QRS complexes is changing, whether it is increasing or decreasing, that is an irregular ECG and that shows abnormality. So what you can do is that you can use calipers or you can even simply use a ruler. You measure one distance between the two QRS complexes and you keep measuring it ahead. You keep measuring it ahead. The distance between the QRS complexes, if it remains the same, it means that it is a regular ECG. And this is another ECG. In such ECG, you always use the point which is more clear to you. So the lower part is more clear. Distance between the two QRS complexes can be measured with a simple ruler. You can even simply count the number of uh, small boxes or you can use the calipers. So it's very easy. So the distance between the QRS complexes is the same. It is the regular ECG. Now, if you look at this ECG, and if you measure it with calipers, or even by simply looking at it, you can easily tell that this area is small and distance between this QRS complex and this QRS complex is bigger. So it is an irregular ECG. So now in this video, we talked about rate and regularity. In the next video, we'll discuss how to determine whether the P wave is normal or not whether the PR interval is normal or not, whether the QRS is wide or narrow, and how do you write down interpretation? We'll practice many ECGs, many difficult as well as easy ECGs, and you will master that how to determine rhythm in an ECG. Make sure to watch that video as well. Before going into the summary, please click on the subscribe button. In summary, we talked about rhythm determination, the rate and regularity. We talked about different methods, the square counting method, the 300 method, the 1500 method of uh, rate calculation, the six second method of rate calculation. And then we talked about how to determine regularity in an ECG. You determine it with calipers or simple ruler or simply counting the number of small boxes in between.
If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and make sure to check out the next video in which we will discuss the different rhythms and we will study and solve different rhythms, the simpler ones as well as the difficult ones. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.